The next morning, we hopped on the Enchanted Circle Scenic Byway, a great way to explore the region around Taos and an excuse to stop in an Enchanted Circle Pottery, only 20 minutes from downtown Taos. Welcome to Enchanted Circle Pottery. Uh, this is our pottery right here, and this is our studio. The most important thing in the studio is the crack, okay? My wife works over here, and I work over here. We're separately in love, and it works out great that way. Perfect. Okay. The technique that I use is usually considered slab, and so what I do is I roll out big sheets of clay, and then shape them and decorate them, and then I put the two together. I have a collection. Um, my best friend's mother used to collect bells, and so I used the handle of the bell. After she passed away, my friend Mary Lou sent me like five of her bells, so I used those to decorate a lot. So basically, I've got this, this side here was one slab, and this side here was one slab, and then I put them together, and then I have a separate slab for the bottom and the top. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just finishing up the top here, and I'm going to be cutting an opening and making it actually into a vessel. I have to ask you, where do you draw your inspiration from? You know, it's kind of funny. I, I wish uh, this actually came, uh, we were visiting our friends in Kauai, and I started drawing the bird of paradise flowers, and that drawing went from a bird of paradise to this. And then the pieces always evolve. You know, one piece will evolve into another, and, you know, this is probably, you know, the sixth pot that came from the bird of paradise thing. So no two pieces are ever together, and they all sort of evolve. Awesome. Amazing. Well, thanks for talking with us. Yeah, I think Joe's going to show us around a little bit more later, but now we're going to go talk to Kevin for a bit while he's working on the wheel. The difference between what you do and what Joe does is that you work primarily on the wheel. Right. Correct? I work on a potter's wheel, and I make utilitarian things. Uh, I make things that are functional that you can eat out of. Okay, okay, so that's mostly what I do. And you can see around I have bowls and all kinds of goblets and things. Oh, so. yeah. And are these all microwave safe and dishwasher yes. safe? Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Everything's, everything's microwave safe, wow. dishwasher safe. So it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of fun to make it. And it's, it's a real craft. And once you learn the craft, then you can start to put yourself into it or a little more artistic... Uh, finishes on them and, and they become your own. So now we're going to check out the kiln? Right, we're going out oh here boy. to the kiln yard and this is the inside of the kiln. Uh, this white stuff is a kiln wash. The kiln wash is in the kiln so that it keeps the, the uh, ash from building up and you can chip it off easier. And that's okay. made of alumina and kaolin. Okay. okay. Mixed up. And it's just like a white wash when you know, when you whitewash a fence or something like that. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. All right. So when you get in trouble, does your wife stick you in here? Yes. Just like yes. the time out area? All the time. Yes. Okay. I, sl I sleep in here. This is a great dog house. Oh, okay. You know, cool. And, and it's as warm as you want it. You can stoke it or whatever. Oh, you're right. You can be yeah. nice and toasty Wonderful. there. Wonderful. Get a good book. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's right. No no light, though. No light. Oh. Yeah, okay. Going to need a book light. There you go. <laughs> um, we always like to show customers kind of the, uh, get them an understanding of what the, about the final product. If you look at this piece, you'll notice how red it is on this side. And if you turn this side, you'll notice it's more multicolored. This was sitting in the kiln just like this, and the fire was hitting it this way, so it was bringing across the ash, and this side got blasted with ash, okay. whereas this side was just decorated by the flames coming around. So in the wood kiln, basically two things happen. The ash gets deposited, and we get to such high temperatures that it actually melts and forms a glaze. And then the other thing is as the flames go around, the flames do what's called blushing. I'm going to grab this piece real quick. If you look at this, this is just like a little wine decanter. You can see all the glaze running down the front here. When I, this again was in the kiln this way. You can see the ash is deposited here and actually landed here. When I turn it, you're going to see there's not as much ash on yeah. that side. So and the textures are completely different on both sides. Right. Because and of the ash. Exactly, yeah. because of the ash. And so what's really neat is we get so many different results in the kiln by just letting the ash and the fire do its thing. Kevin and Joe give tours year-round, so be sure to stop in. We're standing outside Graham's Grill, which is located right on the Taos Plaza. It's been voted one of the best restaurants in Taos for four years straight, and they've won all kinds of Best of Taos awards, including Best Restaurant, but 
patio ambiance and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Great bragging rights. So we're about to enjoy an awesome lunch and we also get to talk to the chef, Leslie Fay. When we walked past the kitchen, we knew instantly what to order. Mac and cheese with bacon and green chilies, a summery shrimp salad, a lamb burger. Ooh, and you can't forget dessert. Macadamia nut tart, yes please. So we're here with Leslie B. Fay, the owner and chef extraordinaire here at Graham's Grill. Well, thank you so much for coming by. We provided a, like a neighborhood restaurant. We're very strong in the local business. We're referred by all the B&Bs and businesses in town. You greet the guests instantly. You yeah. make them feel welcome. They, anything they want, we provide. We do custom meals for everybody, gluten-free, uh, vegan, um, vegetarian, wow. uh, specialty wow. items that we will just create for them whenever they want. We split without a charge. We, um, that uh, makes a big We hate too. splitting charges. Oh, doesn't yeah. that feel like a ripoff thing? Because oh. you want to try so many things. And you, you yeah. Don't you want to try all these things on the menu? Yeah. But you can't. Yeah. Exactly. And then we also let people do any kind of, um, oh, I don't want rice. Can I have sweet potatoes? Of course you can. I would never charge anybody for that. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you for an amazing meal. I am so stuck. It's time to take so a nap. Happy. I know. <laughs> I know. The sun's out. You can go lay out like oh, a yeah. lizard out there. After our nap, it was time to check out the Taos nightlife at the Alley Cantina. With fun bar games, a kitchen that's open late, and free live music five nights a week, the Alley is the place to be. Come dance the night away and hear great local bands like the Monkey Beaters. A night of fun made it tough to wake up at 4.30 the next morning, but we knew we were in for a treat. We're here with the Pueblo Balloon Company, about to go up for our first hot air balloon ride. <laughs> so exciting. You can Look hear the, the noise of them blowing them up behind us. Apparently we're supposed to stay ready because once they're blown up, we got a quick hop in the basket so it doesn't fly off without us. Wizard of Oz style. <laughs> <laughs> so we better get over by our basket, but we'll catch you after our ride. Catch you later. <laughs> first things first, the balloons need a whole lot of propane to get off the ground. Once they're finally lifted, it's time to get in the basket, or gondola as they're properly known. <laughs> Most important thing to remember is no matter what happens, do that. Okay. You guys are off. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. That would be Ed Smith, our pilot and the owner of the Pueblo Balloon Company. He kept us laughing the entire two hour ride and knew all the ins and outs of the area. Those two little puddles of water on the right down there are the hot springs, Black Rock Hot Springs. You can see we got some folks in it. Oh, yeah. It is clothing yeah. optional, so look at your own roof. The Puebla balloon ride is unique not only because you might get to see naked people, but also because it drops down into the Rio Grande Gorge, one of New Mexico's most popular natural attractions. Weather permitting, the balloon goes so far down into the gorge that the gondola actually dips into the water of the Rio Grande. Amazing. So smooth. As your gondola drips dry, you slowly float up. And up. You might be surprised just how high these babies can go. Yeah, we're right at 2,000 feet above the ground. There it is. After taking it all in, it was time to get back to reality. Our chase crew tracked us down just in time for landing. But the balloon decided the ride wasn't over. Oh, here we go, bye! 
When we finally got our feet back on the ground, it was time to help pack up. Am I doing it right? I think so. Just getting aggressive with it. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I got lost! The balloon is winning. There's a big old nasty mud party over here. Does that matter? Awesome. Uh, a big old nasty mud party. A mud, <laughs> mud party. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> there you go. That was aggressive. <laughs> so now it's time for breakfast. Yes, please. <laughs> it's tradition to have a champagne toast after a hot air balloon ride. And brunch gave us a chance to chat with Ed. We're here with Ed Smith, who was our brilliant pilot today yeah. on our hot air balloon adventure, and also the owner of the Pueblo Balloon Company, is that right? That's correct. But today we went 3,500 feet above the ground. Yeah. It was high. Yeah, it was high. It was, it was really amazing. high. <laughs> you kind of forget how high you are, and then you look down, and you're like, oh, <laughs> and all of a sudden I'm your really stomach high. drops. <laughs> but it's actually not as scary as you would imagine. It's, it's so no, smooth. No, no. About 40% of the folks we fly have a problem with heights. They never have a problem with the balloon. Yeah. Because yeah. you never know you're flying. That's true. Right. One lady said it was more like the earth just kind of dropped away below it. <laughs> you know? And yeah. that's kind of true. It may not be the cheapest thing Taos has to offer, but mention Susan Clo and get $25 off. Trust us. It's worth it. What a way to start the day. But we couldn't get those hot springs off our minds. So we decided we had to find them for ourselves. We're just hanging out here in the Black Rock Mineral Springs. These hot springs apparently have lithium in them. So if you drink it, maybe you'll be happy. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we should try. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe I don't not. know if you can see all the moss. You but let us know if you try. <laughs> it actually is quite comfortable and relaxing, though. And the best part about it is it's free. And depending on who you are, the second best part is that clothing is optional. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. While we did see some cacti, creepy lizards, several prairie dogs, and a ton of dry nothingness. We would have missed out had we not taken a chance on Taos.